Hello and welcome to this A-level chemistry video where I'm going to help you to prioritise your revision for the paper 2 exam for AQA chemistry. There are 21 different topics that you can be assessed on on paper 2 and I've done an in-depth exam analysis of all of the paper 2s that there have been to help you find out the answers to these questions. Which topics come up the most often and which are worth the most marks? Are there some really consistent topics that are assessed every time? And are there some parts of topics that come up more than others? I'll answer all of those in this video. There have been seven paper two exams for A-level chemistry and there are a number of topics that have appeared on every single one. So a good starting point for where to prioritize your revision would come from these topics. So rate equation from the physical chemistry topics, then carboxylic acids and their derivatives, NMR, aromatic chemistry, halogenoalkanes, amines and organic analysis. They've come up every single time. Every year on a paper, some topics are worth more than others. So I've looked at what are the big three topics on a particular paper for each year, and I've looked to see which topics are consistently worth a high number of marks. Rate equations comes out in top there. They Six times on papers, it's been one of the biggest three topics on that paper. Amount of substance follows Closely behind that, as does the first organic topic, carboxylic acids and derivatives, and then KC. These topics make up the heavy hitters, if you like, on a particular paper, being worth the most marks for that particular year. It's worth pointing out that the grade boundaries do change each year, and you can see I've mapped them all out across those seven years, marking the score that you need to get on each paper to get the particular grade. And on the right-hand side, I've got the mean number of marks needed to get each grade. So for instance, across all of the papers, on average, 70 out of 105 gets you a grade A. It's always worth looking at the particular mark breakdown through that lens of the grade that you're aiming for in order to better put that into context. If we dig more deeply into the marks available for each topic across those seven papers, you can see a more clear pattern emerging of which topics you should prioritise, because firmly in the lead is the rate equations topic, making up nearly 12% of the paper on average across those seven years. And closely behind that comes amount of substance and carboxylic acids and derivatives, then NMR. So all of those topics are the ones that were the heavy hitters that I mentioned previously. And then the equilibria comes in in fifth place with an average of seven marks per paper across those seven years on average overall. Obviously, there are no guarantees that this pattern will continue into 2024, so clearly I, I need to say that you should revise everything, but when considering what you need to prioritise, this should be a helpful starting point for the top five topics on average across those years. And if we go a little bit further down the list, you can see four more organic chemistry topics worth six marks each per paper. If we add together the marks for these topics, you can see that just across those nine topics, you get 69 marks on average. That's one mark off a of grade A for nine topics out of those 21. So this definitely seems like some sensible prioritization. If you prefer to see things in graphical form, we've got the same data, the same spread, and obviously the same conclusion. It looks even more stark like this, that the rate equation is firmly in the lead, and we've got those other topics following close behind. But then it actually paints quite a, a strange picture, because there's some topics that really aren't assessed very much at all. Alkanes and bonding and isomerism, really, on average, those final five topics are worth about as much as rate equations, only once you've added them all together. This graph shows us the spread of marks across the different years and you can see that rate equations is really consistently assessed every year quite a significant number of marks comes up from back in 2017 which is the dark blue at the bottom and then 2023 is the even darker blue at the top and so you can see that these heavy hitters on the left hand side they are pretty consistent and then when we get to the fifth one along you can see that actually chemical equilibria and KC 
wasn't assessed on paper two in 2023. And so perhaps that means that it might come up with a greater emphasis in 2024. No guarantees, but that's not a bad idea to think about your priorities. And then you can see further to the right, amino acids, proteins, DNA, that didn't come up in 2023 either. And so this is helpful, but there are no guarantees. Obviously, some of these topics are really large, and so it's worth knowing which bits of that topic get prioritised more on average. And you can see that the subtopic that is assessed the most is the rate equation. So that means working out the order with respect to a particular concentration or actually doing some calculations about the units of the rate constant. That comes up with an average of 5.3 marks per paper. Not too far behind comes those required practicals where you're making an organic compound, that's required practical 10, and then perhaps separating it out, that's the AS required practical 5. And then you can see that you've got esters is the biggest subtopic within the carboxylic acids topic, then electrophilic substitution of benzenes, and then proton NMR specifically comes up in fifth place. To finish off, I'd like to restate the fact that I really do recommend that you revise as many of these topics as possible, but I do recognise that when you're in the final days before the exam, you really do want to know where to best prioritise your efforts. I've put some links into the description for this video that might be useful for you to check out to help you revise these specific topics that I've covered. And then what I'd also say is that if you do some revision for a paper two topic that doesn't come up on paper two, do remember that that could still come up on paper three. So any of that type of revision, definitely still worthwhile. Okay, good luck, everybody.